We'd now like to spend some time reviewing the grant command. It's the main command that's used to, or the main routine that is, that's used for granting privileges. It also assists in creating users. So the grant command creates users and it also allows us to assign privileges to those users. As you've seen, we've used the grant command to create the users that are currently defined. Let's look at those users from our most recently run query. When we set up MySQL, two users were already defined, as well as the anonymous users, so we should say four users were defined. Root at localhost, root at the name of the current host, this is a short name, Linux CBT DB1, as well as two anonymous accounts which no longer exist, and rightfully so, because in any production environment, you really should not have, unless you have a good reason, anonymous accounts, because data could be leaked inadvertently. We've since created additional users, including root at Linux CBT Media 1, which is a box that we've been connecting to. And we've also created a corresponding account, which includes the fully qualified domain name of Linux CBT Media 1 in the event that when connecting from Linux CBT Media 1, the MySQL client submits the fully qualified domain name, MySQL permits access. And we've also, just in the event that DNS resolution breaks down, created a user for usage from the remote system Linux CBT Media 1 using its IP address. It is suggested that when you create users, you create two users. One at the actual host name, either using short or fully qualified name, preferably the fully qualified domain name if your DNS configuration is intact or if you have hosts file entries taken care of, and two with IP addresses. Just in the event that the DNS resolution breaks down, the user is still able to connect. So just keep that in mind. But now we want to use grant to create some additional fictitious users, or, well, there'll be real users in our system, and test how the user is able to interact with MySQL both locally and remotely. So you know the grant command. So our first task is to use the grant command yet again to create a user who has full privileges on the system minus the grant option. So task, use the grant and we'll use we'll specify grant in uppercase since it's a key routine. So use the grant routine to create various users with various privileges. So in the first instance, create a user named Linux CBT with full privileges minus grant option and we'll do so for localhost initially and then for the remote system and then for any system and we'll test connecting to our MySQL instance from multiple systems so how do we go about creating a user named Linux CBT with full privileges the key command again is the grant command so in order to do so we'll use grant and we'll uppercase the routine name so that it stands out. We'll grant all. The key privilege here is all. All simply means all of the privileges minus the grant option, but pretty much all of the privileges, which includes the previously mentioned privileges such as create and alter, but not grant, create, alter, and so on. And we want to specify on what objects. Whenever specifying objects, you specify using the following syntax. DB name dot table name. But we substitute DB name and table name using wildcards when we want to grant all access to a given user to all databases and all tables. If you want to be precise, such as granting access just to the test database and only to, let's say, table 1, you could do that. And we'll show you that later on. But for now, we are creating a user who has full access. So we'll simply say star dot star. A shortcut for star dot star is simply star or a single asterisk. So keep that in mind as well. You could do grant all on star. So the syntax for, for grant is first grant followed by 
the routines or the privileges in this case we're saying all but we could grant create we could grant shutdown and there are many others that we could grant we'll go through the list in the subsequent section before moving on to revoke we want to grant all and then we need to sp specify on what on what database on what table well if you say star or star dot star this means all databases and all tables followed by to some user, and in this case to user, Linux CBT, which we're defining right now, and if we sp simply specify a username without the following at symbol as well as the host name, MySQL will create a user called Linux CBT at a percent host. In other words, it'll use or substitute in the host column a wildcard. So let's take a look at our current structure. Notice we have a user column and a host column. If you define a user using the grant command and specify the user which is required unless you use blank for anonymous but you don't specify the host, MySQL will fill in simply a wildcard placeholder which simply means any host will suffice. So if you want to force localhost then go ahead and specify localhost. We're going to start with localhost and we'll add all hosts after. So we want to grant to user Linux CBT and we'll include the username in between single quotes followed by at which is not in between quotes followed by open single quote and we'll specify localhost new user at the localhost so once we've gotten the username out of the way we need to identify the user so by a password that is so let's identify the user using the identified by and in between single quotes followed by a semicolon will specify the password. So our first grant command is very simple. Grant all. All possible privileges minus the grant option, which means this new user, Linux CBT at localhost, will be able to connect but will not be able to grant additional privileges to additional users on the system. We want to grant all privileges on all databases, all tables to the user Linux CBT at localhost, identified by some password. It's a very simple command. Let's specify the password as XYZ123, and that's it. We have our command. Let's copy and paste this into the MySQL terminal monitor. And let's check that our syntax, we'll double check what's wrong with our syntax. And in this case, we actually have an inadvertent user command. Let's just get rid of this using delete. And now the command ran properly. So in our command, we simply had the user which is unnecessary this is the substitution for Linux CBT at localhost or the actual user who we intend to create so it's grant all on database table name to the username we actually included user but it's actually to the actual user so substitute for user the user who you intend to define which could be simply a user which means user at any host or a user at a specific host and the host could be a name it could also be an IP address, it could also be a wildcard to indicate a given domain such as percent dot Linux CBT dot internal indicating to MySQL that as long as the user is logging in from a host with a fully qualified domain name part of Linux CBT dot internal they'll be permitted access. Let's rerun our select query of the MySQL dot user table. We don't need the alter privileges although it helps to show that what we've done has created effectively a, su a super user in the user Linux CBT. So here's the new user Linux CBT localhost who has create privileges, alter privileges and the like. The user Linux CBT is considered to be a, a super user but again the user doesn't have the grant option. If we execute a show grants for Linux CBT at localhost you'll see that the user does not have the grant option whereas if we execute a show grants for the currently logged in user we have all privileges similar to the Linux CBT user but we also have this grant option which gives us the permission of assigning new permissions and creating new users nonetheless we now have a new user who can connect from the local host but not from the remote host so let's test that out in a separate window we are logged into the Linux shell as a user called Linux CBT, so that means we don't need to specify to MySQL client the user option. So we'll simply execute MySQL, followed by a prompt for a password, and the client defaults to the local system. That's already been discussed. We'll simply specify XYZ123, 
and while hour in, and we can go through the history because at one point we did log in using a Linux CBT user account, and as a result, MySQL wrote to Linux CBT's home directory a history file, which we'll show you momentarily. So now we're in. Let's execute a select current underscore user, open close parens, and we're in as Linux CBT. A show grants indicates that we pretty much have all privileges to all databases, which means a show databases will reveal all the databases on the system. Now you're wondering, can we actually create a new user? How about creating a user called Linux CBT2 as Linux CBT? Let's try it. So let's grant all on star. We mentioned you could use star instead of star.star .star to Linux CBT2. And we won't specify the fully qualified name or the at symbol or the host name identified by the same password XYZ123. Let's see what happens here. Notice access is denied. It's not because of the syntax, it's simply because we don't have the privileges to do so. We don't have the grant option. But if we took this exact command and copied it to the other window where we're logged in as root with the grant option, as evidenced by the show grants for user root, we'll be able to do so in this window that is. Let's paste it. And let's create this user Linux CBT2, and it's the same command, but now we have a new user. Let's rerun the select, and there's that new user, Linux CBT2. But notice, because we did not specify the host part after the at symbol, MySQL simply substituted a wildcard character, which is the standard SQL wildcard character, the percent symbol. So you can use this in Microsoft SQL as well. And this means Linux CBT2 can connect from any host, including the local host, which we'll confirm, of course. Now, whether or not the user has all privileges on all items remains to be seen. As you can see, the user doesn't have create privileges or alter privileges. How about we simply specify with the creation of the user star dot star to show you the difference. And notice it's created the user, let's select the user, now we have a new user, Linux CBT2, and the privileges have been turned on, which tells you that when you indicate star, the user doesn't have the full privileges to the global MySQL, but when you indicate star.star, .star, the user has global privileges. So star.star .star means global, star means current database. So when you indicate, let's just specify it in our documentation here, when you indicate star, or star dot star, we should say star dot star means at the DBMS level. Star means at the DB level, such as MySQL. So within the MySQL database, for example, the user Linux CBT2 was granted full permission to do whatever, with the exception of granting new users or privileges to new users or existing users within the DBMS. So it's not confusing, just some of the syntax is a little hairy, but you, could, you should be able to follow along and practice by creating some users. Now let's attempt to authenticate using the user Linux CBT2. From a separate shell, we'll quit the existing session using backslash Q, clear screen, and we'll log in yet again, but this time we'll specify a user called Linux CBT2. This forces us to prompt, and it's the same XYZ123. We'll execute a select. Now notice, we do have a history, and we told you it would confirm that the reason why we have a history is because the history file is tied to the Linux or locally logged in Unix user. In this case, we're logged into a Linux system, and there's a history file, a hidden file in the user's home directory, which we'll show you momentarily. But when we execute select current user, it reveals that we're in as Linux CBT2 at any host. Let's execute a show grants to see what sort of privileges we have on the system. And it shows that we have all privileges on MySQL. This is the original privilege granted by executing simply an asterisk, a, sim a single asterisk, which forces DB supremacy. But when you use asterisk dot asterisk, that gives you global supremacy for the entire DBMS, minus the grant option, of course, because we didn't specify as such. So this user has both privileges. We could drop one of the privileges or drop the user entirely. But before we drop the user, from a separate shell, let's SSH out as root to Linux CBT Media 1. Hopefully, the name service is taken care of. And let's try to put the fully qualified name to see if it resolves. And it doesn't. Let's 
SSH as root to 192.168.1.100, .1 that'll definitely respond positively. And we are logged in as root. Let's then MySQL in to the host, Linux CBT DB1, hopefully DNS is in order, followed by the user, Linux CBT2, followed by a prompt for a password. And we have been prompted, but this is all on the client side, so we don't know if all is well yet. Let's specify a password of XYZ123, and now we're in. Let's select current underscore user, open close paren, and we're in as Linux CBT2 from the remote system. So we're in, and a show grants will reveal that we have full access minus the grant option to the full DBMS, as well as full access on the MySQL database minus the grant option. So by creating that additional user, who isn't restricted to a given host, we're able to log in. But from the remote system, if we were to quit this session and attempt to log in as a user called Linux CBT without the two, with the same XYZ123 password, it doesn't allow us because according to the user table, Linux CBT can only log in if the host part contains localhost, whereas we are attempting to submit Linux CBT at 192.168.1.100. Of course, the IP address shows up because DNS isn't entirely configured. Great, so that's a little bit about using the grant command. Next, we continue to use the grant command in more creative ways. Let's continue our discussion of the grant command. We literally could spend hours using grant and its corresponding revoke commands because they're so important in provisioning privileges to the DBMS. An essential part of administering any DBMS system, regardless of whether it's MySQL, Microsoft's SQL, Oracle, or DB2, is understanding user management, how it works, how it relates to operating system accounts, how to interface to other user accounts repositories such as LDAP and the like. Once you understand how to control the privileges on your DBMS, then you have pretty much conquered more than half of what it takes to effectively administer a DBMS. It's easy to load data into a DBMS, but it isn't easy to secure access and to provide functionality at the same time. It is really a double-edged sword because DBMSs provide structured data, which is searchable and parsable relatively quickly, but at the same time, you need to guard against leaking information to inappropriate parties, and that's where grant and revoke type commands can help out a lot. We want to look at some other ways of using the grant command. So far we've been granting pretty much full privileges, which is always easy to do. And we know how to do it for both the local system and for a specific remote system, as well as for any remote system. How about setting up privileges using the grant command, but creating a user but not assigning privileges? So this task, and it sounds a little weird, but you may want to provision users. So create a user named Linux CBT3. And by the way, we're going to delete all these users so it doesn't get too messy. Messy. With really no privileges. Pretty much equivalent to the anonymous users that are defined, the blank anonymous users for local hosts and for any host. So how do we create a user named Linux CBT3 with no privileges? We'll execute the grant, and we could also use the create user command, which provides the same effect. But if we grant usage, usage is another type of permission. So if we grant usage instead of granting all, as we've been doing, so grant usage of the DBMS. But usage, although it sounds like select permissions, is not select permissions. Grant usage on whatever the DB name is, to the user will allow the user to interact with that DBMS almost like in an anonymous fashion. So let's grant usage on star dot star to Linux CBT3 will permit access from any host identified by and the password will specify will be simply XYZ123. And that's XYZ123 and we'll terminate with a semicolon. So we're going to grant the usage privilege this time. Let's go ahead and do that. 
locally in our terminal monitor where we're logged in as the root user. Let's see who we currently are in this window. It's an XCBT2 without grant privileges, so if we attempt to create the user, it fails. But in the first window, we can do so because we're logged in as root. Let's rerun the select, which returns the different privileges and users were defined. And here's the XCBT3. Notice no create privileges or alter privileges. So what does that mean for the user Linux CBT3? Let's execute a show grants for Linux CBT3 and see what permissions are provisioned for this particular user. This user is simply granted usage on any database, any table. But what does that all mean? Well, from a remote system, let's attempt to connect. We'll clear screen and re-execute the MySQL connect, but this time instead we'll use Linux CBT3 as the user account followed by the proper password of XYZ123. We're in the database. However, if we execute a show databases, what's returned? Simply the information schema. One, there's no test database anymore. And two, usage means exactly what we mentioned. Although we said usage on star dot star, and it sounds as if it means select permissions, it really isn't. It's an anonymous connection. It's a simple way for us to provision users without outright, assi outright assigning them privileges to any database. This allows us to, the flexibility of assigning privileges to distinct databases at a later time. So for example, you may have 50 users in your organization. You need to set them up very quickly. You can execute a bunch of grant statements using the usage feature or the usage permission and rest assured that the user will pretty much not be able to do anything. So for example, let's try to use MySQL as this user. Doesn't work. Access denied. So the ideal situation is you take this particular string and you pump it into a script downloading all of the users perhaps from your Active Directory or something and generate maybe n number of statements. So you may have one, two, three, four, five allowing us to define users Linux CBTs 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All users with the same password but with no privileges to any of the databases. So it's just a provisioning permission. Let's attempt to provision those extra users by control shift Ving. And again, we could place all of this on one line. Just simply separate the statements with semicolon and that's all you'll need. Let's go ahead and try to paste that in. And notice, they've all run, and we just have to press enter for the last one. Now when we re-execute a select user host, and let's go ahead and take one of the privilege columns so that we can rest assured that the user doesn't have any privileges. Let's take the create privilege since we don't, we want to be sure that none of these newly provisioned users are permitted to create anything in the DBMS. And we'll take current priv from mysql.user. We like to specify the database name just in the event that you're out of context, such as not within the context of the user or the MySQL database to select the user table directly. And this applies to pretty much any SQL standard, this syntax that is, to any SQL standard DBMS, including again Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, and so on. So here are the new users, 4 through 8. They can log in from any host, but they really have no privileges. They're anonymous users. so let's quit the existing session on the remote system Linux CBT Media 1 and let's just pick a number arbitrarily such as number 7 specify an incorrect password of ABC123 and we fail to log in this time let's specify the correct password on the shell XYZ123 and now we're in a select current user reveals that we're in as Linux CBT 7 however a show Grant reveals that we really have no privile privileges, we have usage privileges, which means we're provisioned, but we haven't yet been granted permissions to any of the DBMS's databases. So you're wondering naturally, or you should be wondering naturally, now that we have all these users provisioned, how do we assign them privileges to databases? Well, they're defined. So if there's a database that you have in mind that you'd like to give the user access to, simply run the grant statement or rerun the grant statement provisioning access. So we could grant, select, or specific permission, which we'll get into at a later time. We'll leave these accounts in here so we can show you how easy it is to make those changes. Now there are some other ways that we can use grant that we wanted to discuss.
we told you that you could restrict access to a specific database. Well, we really don't have additional databases to show you with the exception of MySQL, and you generally don't want to grant access to non-privileged users of your system the MySQL database. So let's show databases and see what we can do to rectify the situation. We have the information schema, which we don't want to give away access to, test and MySQL. And notice that these users don't even have access to the test database. How do we grant access to a new database? There are many ways we can do it. We can create a new database container such as test. We could call it test2, temp, tempdb like in SQL, Microsoft SQL. Or we could just use the existing test database and grant access to a specific user, a new user such as Linux CBT9 to the test database. The syntax would look just like the following, so we'll copy it. And our task here, so we've taken care of task two, task three, create a user named Linux CBT9 with full privileges to test DB. And we'd execute a grant all if that's what we want or intend on and instead of star dot star test dot star or db dot any number of tables which includes columns to Linux CBT9 identified by XYZ123 so let's test this out now the funny thing is the test database if we use it for example let's use test show tables the test database contains no tables so we'll be able to see the test database as Linux CBT9 but there are no tables for us to interact with we'd have to create tables within tests to be effective so let's go ahead and create this new user Linux CBT9 there's the new user and let's rerun that select statement which is somewhere in the history there's Linux CBT9 Linux CBT9 has access to the test database how do we know well you can't tell by looking at the user table because global privileges aren't enabled for this particular user but database scope level privileges are so if we were to use MySQL for example show tables you know that on a database scope level we're focusing on two tables the host table and the DB table if we describe DB you know that the DB table consists of the following fields a simple select star from DB reveals all of the entries. Now notice the DB table contains information related to the newly created user Linux CBT9. This is what we mean by database scope permissions. Notice that this new user Linux CBT9 has access to the test DB from any host with select privileges because we granted everything which includes all of these individual privileges that you see here it's just that since we've shifted scopes from global to database the privilege information is stored within the host and DB tables instead of in the mysql.user table and here are the permissions all these yeses that you see here apply let's select star from host and again, we're looking for anything that pertains to Linux CBT 9 or Linux CBT 2 doesn't apply. In this case, the only thing that applies on the database scope level is the DB table, permissions to the DB. If there are any host specific attributes that need to be set, they'll get defined in the host table, if and when. But those are additional privileges, such as whether or not a user can alter, set up triggers, store procedures, anything table specific super so now we have this new user let's attempt to connect from the remote system we'll use the backslash Q escape sequence to get out of the MySQL terminal monitor clear screen rerun the MySQL command but this time we'll log in as Linux CBT 9 instead of 7 using the same XYZ123 password and we'll of course execute a select current user which is critical to determining who we currently are and we are in as Linux CBT 9 which means if we execute a show databases we now see the test database because we've been granted database scope level permissions one level beneath the global permissions global applies yet again to the top level of the hierarchy DBMS whereas database scope level permissions apply to the DB directly so we're one level down but at least we can interact with the test DB we can use tests 
and we can execute show tables, but there are no tables. However, if we are granted the create privilege within this particular DB, we would be able to create a new table. So that is certainly a possibility. And we'd simply need to go through the DB table to determine whether or not the user is granted. Now we granted full privileges. So here's the create privilege. And notice that for the user Linux CBT9, all of the columns have Y turned on. We could execute select DB user as well as create underscore priv and you'll see from the host table that is let's double check our list here we want db user as well as create underscore priv let's confirm that we have it and user is set as follows as well as create priv And let's take a look at that again. We'll describe host. Oh, in fact, we selected from the wrong database. It should be DB. And there it is. So, from the proper DB, it wasn't the case sensitivity. It was just we selected an incorrect DB. From the proper DB, which is the DB table, here's a DB test. The user Linux CBT9 has the create privilege, which means in the window over here, we could actually create objects beneath the database, which includes tables. So that's how you complete the task of creating a user who has full privileges to a direct DB. Of course, there's still other things that we can do. For example, we could create usage or create a user who has usage only on a specific database or create a user who can only interact with a specific table within a specific database, which we'll look at later on. We can also grant, let's say, the ability to drop. What if we wanted a user to have just drop privileges or to grant a user the ability to shut down the MySQL server. That's certainly a possibility. And when we look at MySQL admin, which we'll do in two separate sections or maybe more, then we'll focus on how to get some of those different tasks done. So great. We've set all these users up. The next thing we want to do is focus on revoking all the privileges that we've defined because it'll give us practice in using the revoke command, which is another key command in maintaining the DBMS permissions.